Hi, I'm John. I'm the lead developer for the OpenVista GTM integration project, and you're watching the first update to our original 10-minute install video. Since last time, we've made two GTM integration project releases. The most visible change is that we've put our packages into an apt repository to make the initial package installation simpler. An additional benefit to installing from repositories is that you will automatically be notified by Ubuntu's update manager whenever we release a newer version. If you're using Red Hat Enterprise Linux or CentOS, we also publish our packages in a YUM repository, so you'd get the same benefits on RHEL and CentOS. Along with the repositories, we've added support for the latest version of Ubuntu, version 9.10, codenamed Karmic, so we're doing this updated screencast on a brand new Karmic installation. Let's get started. Like last time, you're going to want to go to medsphere.org to download OpenVista Server. From the home page, select Open Vista Server on the right, and then click on Download. If you're starting from scratch on GTM, you're going to want to download Open Vista Server Routines and Globals for importing into a new GTM database. In the interest of time, I've already downloaded this file, and by default, Firefox puts downloads in the Downloads directory under Places. So you'll see the zip file right here. While you're waiting for OpenVista Server to download, go back to medsphere.org, click on FM, uh, sorry, GTM Integration, and click on Download. And then click on Ubuntu Packages for instructions on how to add the medsphere.org package repository to your list of apt sources. The first thing you're going to want to do is add this repository's signing key to the list of trusted keys on the system. This ensures that the package that we download and install later will be actually coming from this repository. So go to Applications, Accessories, Terminal, and copy and paste this command into the terminal. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add these two apt lines into your etc. apt sources.list file. You can edit the file manually, or you can go to System, Administration, Software Sources, click on Other Software, and then click on the Add button, then copy the apt lines one by one into the dialog. You're going to want to change your Ubuntu version to the code name of the Ubuntu version that you're running. So in this case, it's Karmic. Once you've added one apt line, you can go ahead and do the same for the other one. Once you're done, click Close, and you'll be prompted to reload the sources list, the uh, list of software available for the system. Go ahead and click Reload now, and uh, that will save us from having to run sudo apt-get update later. Once the software sources dialog is done reloading, you can now install packages. So we can copy and paste this installation command into the terminal. And this installs the OpenVista Utils package. You'll notice that all the dependencies and recommended packages, such as GTM, Apache, and OpenSSH, are installed automatically. If you're running on a machine with multiple processors or cores, uh, you'll want to install the optional pbzip2 package right here. Um, this package allows the OpenVista backup script to use more than one core simultaneously when compressing backups. Uh, and if you're planning to connect to OpenVista server's roll and scroll interface from Windows, you'll want to install the PuTTY tools package here. Um, this allows us to generate SSH keys in PuTTY's uh, PPK pri PuTTY private key format uh, so that you can copy them directly to a Windows machine. Otherwise, you'd have to convert the keys to PPK format manually. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this install command to the terminal as well. Uh, now that the package installation is complete, we can close Firefox and our presentation. And uh, the next thing we need to do is add ourselves to the OpenVista and GTM groups. So my username is John. Uh, so the command is sudo add user John 
GTM. And sudo add user John Open Vista. You'll notice that I'm already a member of these two groups, and uh, I've already added myself to the groups ahead of time, because to make the group membership take effect, you need to log out and back in again, and that would disrupt the screencast. So uh, once your Open Vista server download is complete, uh, you can go and um, log out by clicking up here in the top right corner, selecting log out, and then log back in to resume the screencast. The next thing we need to do is uh, create a new Open Vista instance, and you can do this with the ob instance add command. Uh, the ob instance add command must be run as root, so ob instance add, uh, and the command takes a single argument, and that's the name of the new instance. Uh, open Vista server comes pre-configured for the instance name of open, so that's what we're going to use here. Now, we need to import uh, Open Vista server into our new empty instance. So first, make sure that you've unzipped the download, uh, and you can do that by right-click on the zip file and selecting Extract here, uh, and that creates this directory here. So inside this directory, you'll notice that there's a globals directory and a routines directory. So we're going to want to run ov import uh, downloads, open this server, uh, sorry, I'm missing a dash r argument. The dash r argument is for routines, um, and you want to give it the directory. Then you're going to say dash g for globals and give it the location of the globals. And the globals are actually stored in a file called globals.zwr. And the last argument to the ov import command is the name of the instance that you want to op uh, import the routines and globals into, and that's open. So while that's going, I'm going to take the time to walk you through some of what the packages and commands are doing under the hood. Um, you'll notice that in the opt directory, there are now two new directories. There's a LSB GTM directory. And in there, uh, there's a subdirectory for every GTM version that's installed on the system. Uh, so if you look at one of these directories, we only have one right now, um, it looks like a standard uh, binary installation of GTM from SourceForge.net. Uh, the difference when you use the packages is that um, the GTM group is added for you automatically, and it also installs all the dependencies for you automatically. Um, you'll notice that there's two files in here, libopenvista.so and openvista.xc, that are new. Uh, these are not part of the standard GTM install. They're installed by the openvista libs package. Uh, this library, libopenvista.so, uh, enhances GTM so that we can start the RPC broker and HL7 listeners from within openvista uh, directly, so we don't have to rely on an external listener like xinetd. Um, going back up to the opt directory, um, in Open Vista, you'll see that there's currently a single directory open, uh, which holds the Open Vista instance that we just created. Um, every time you run the ov instance add command, uh, another directory is created. So inside Open, you'll notice that each Open Vista instance uh, has roughly the same structure. Um, there's a backups directory. Uh, backups are run automatically every night. The backups are compressed and are stored here in the backups directory. Uh, the etc directory. Um, I'll show you what it looks like. Stores uh, configuration files and uh, generated encryption keys and, and uh, automatically generated passwords. Um, the PPKA file that was generated when you ran OV instance add is stored here. This is the file you're going to want to copy to the Windows machine that is logging in using PuTTY. Uh, you're going to want to configure PuTTY to use Open Vista for the username and this PPK file as the key instead of using a regular password. Um, the Globals directory uh, stores uh, globals or database files. Uh, the GTM symlink points to the most recent version of GTM on the system at the time that this instance was created. So in the future, if you install a newer version of GTM, uh, which you can do in parallel with the existing version, um, this instance will still continue to use the current version of GTM until you explicitly do an upgrade. Uh, when you do do an upgrade, which may involve converting data or other tasks, um, you would update this symlink to point to a newer version of GTM. Uh, the images symlink points to the WebDAV root. Uh, this is where OpenVista CIS stores its scan documents and patient photos. Uh, these images and photos are served up by Apache. Uh, the journals directory uh, is where GTM stores its journal files. There should only be one right now. Um, the uh, Open Vista programs or routines are stored in the routines directory, and uh, the objects uh, directory stores the compiled versions of these routines. The TMP directory is just a directory for temporary files. 
Um, if you want to control the number of backups or journals uh, that are kept on the system, uh, you can do that in the etc directory. There's a backups.conf file and a journals.conf file. There are settings in there for controlling on a per instance basis uh, how many journals and backups to keep. Uh, the other thing that the OpenVista utils package does, it uh, installs a configuration snippet in uh, etc. apache 2 conf.d called webdav.conf, and this sets up the OpenVista document imaging repository. So you'll notice that it references this uh, webdav uh, ht password file, which if we cat it, we'll see has one entry in it. So an entry is added by OV instance add every time you create a, a new OpenVista instance, and um, it, an automatically generated webdav password is encrypted and stored in this file. The unencrypted version is stored back in the etc directory. Uh, OV instance add also adds to this um, authorized key file, home openvista.ssh authorized keys. Um, and you'll notice there's two entries in it. Two entries are added every time you do a, um, every time you run OV instance add. And what this uh, line does, it sets up a SSH forced command, which forces the user to run this OV tied command. Uh, you can't see it because of the line wrapping. Um, it forces the user to run the ovtide command when they log in, um, and that way they don't have full run of the Linux system. Uh, the command locks the user into OpenVista so they don't have access to anything else. Um, initially, uh, they'll be forced to log in to Vista, and when they're done, um, they'll be disconnected from the system. So, um, now that OpenVista server is loaded, uh, we just need to configure a few things. So, enter the instance as an administrator by typing OpenVista, uh, and we're going to give it the argument open. And uh, we're going to launch FileMan by typing d p up caret or hat d i. Um, the identity you can just use uh, mansys or system manager for now. Um, you're going to select uh, one for enter or edit file entries, and you're going to want to edit the task man site parameters file. Uh, you can go ahead and edit all the entries. Um, and then here you're going to want to enter two question marks, and this will give us some contextual help. Um, here is the current entry in this file, and here uh, is the correct entry for this system. So you basically need to rename the existing configuration entry um, to the correct entry for this system. This system's uh, host name is Ubuntu, so that's why uh, it's different. So you can get out of there by typing in up caret and then push enter here to get back to the select option prompt. At this point, we need to configure one more file. Uh, so select one for enter and edit, and we want the imaging site parameters file. Uh, here, you're only going to want to edit two fields, the net username field and the net password field, uh, and then hit enter. So select imaging parameters name. You're going to question question again. Uh, there's only one software service. The net username is going to be the name of the instance, so in this case it's open. And the net password is going to be the contents of that uh, HD password file um, that I showed you earlier. So opt, open vista, open etc. Uh, and you're going to need to cat this file as root. Um, and be careful because there's no new line at the end of the file, so this is part of the prompt. This is the actual randomly generated passwords. So you're going to want to copy that password, and paste it into this window. Uh, and at this point, you can just push enter a couple times until you get back to the open prompt. And at this prompt, type H to halt. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the installation. Um, on boot, journal recovery will be performed and startup hooks will be run. Uh, since we're not going to reboot, we can start the uh, run the startup hook now. You can do that by running etc. init.d open vista. Uh, start and uh, the code for the startup hook is in the Z start command. So if I go up um, to routines and if I cat Z start, uh, you'll see that it starts Taskman and the RPC broker. Um, that's the default startup hook. And then there's a corresponding shutdown hook called Z stop. So um, you can check to see that the startup hook worked by getting back into the instance and running d up caret zt mon to monitor taskman. And you want to look for a taskman as current. Uh, so it is. That's good. 
push up caret to get out, up caret and enter. And then uh, you can check that the RPC broker is listening by using D up arrow percent SS, and you can see that the RPC broker uh, is listening. This is the RPC broker process. So um, at this point, uh, if we were to log in via SSH, the OV tide command, uh, as we saw earlier, is the command that would be run. So um, if you if you logged in from like a Windows box using PuTTY, uh, this is basically what you would see. You would be forced into this access and verify code prompt. So you're forced to authenticate with Vista. So we can log in as a position PU1234 as the access code and PU1234 bang bang, uh, two exclamation points um, as the verify code. And uh, it looks like the verify code has expired. So it wants to add a new one. We can just add uh, one more exclamation point at the end here. Oh, it's looking for the current code. Okay, so uh, I've changed my verify code, and you'll see that the physician is logged in at the um, at the uh, text prompt, the roll and scroll prompt. So if I just push enter here, it will say if I want to halt or log out, and I say yes, and um, since I ran OVTide myself, I'm dropped back to the Linux prompt, but uh, if you were connecting from an external machine, the force command, basically once it's done running, uh, the user will be disconnected. Um, we can also test the connection with uh, CIS. So um, I've already installed CIS here, and on Linux you run it with Mono. Uh, the default port is 9201. We're going to connect to our own server here, localhost. Login ID as before was PU1234, and the new verify code is PU1234 with three exclamation points. So I'm going to click Connect. Um, so you can see the patient list here. Uh, we can just pick a sample patient. Um, I don't think there are any patient photos right now, but we can probably add one. You'll see that that's added. Uh, so that works. And uh, I think at this point we're all done. We've connected with CIS. Uh, we know what it looks like to connect with uh, SSH. Um, backups will be run automatically every night. Um, journal recovery and the start hook will run uh, when the system boots. And uh, the start shutdown hook will be run when the system shuts down. Uh, thank you for watching.